Okay, so a hunter with a gun goes out in the woods to hunt for monkeys and sees one hanging in a tree at the same level as the hunter's head. The monkey, we suppose, releases its grip the instant the hunter fires his gun. So question, where should the hunter aim and when should he fire in order to hit the monkey? Now, I'm going to answer this question in my next video as I go over vector versus scalar quantities, as well as vector addition. So if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe, comment, and I'll be right back to give you the, rest, the math or the physics behind this question. Hi, this is Professor Cummings, and I want to do this video just to go over the differences between scalar and vector, as well as vector addition, and then showing how to apply vector addition to a, an actual problem. So when we talk about scalar measurements versus vector measurements, there is a, a distinct difference, and it's very important to us as we start looking at mechanical problems, particularly in kinematics and dynamics. The difference is scalar, when we talk about scalar measurement, we actually talk about just a magnitude. So something we're just measuring an actual magnitude of, of the dimension or the feature that we're talking about. When we talk about vectors, we're talking about a magnitude along with a direction. And we, when we use them properly, we actually have to acknowledge that direction. And it has a lot to do with how we add vectors, how we uh, subtract, how we uh, understand the physical properties of, of an action and what they ultimately mean. So let's give some examples of scalar. So scalar is when we talk about things such as speed, things distance, mass, or volume. These are all things that we can measure. They all have a magnitude, but there is no implication on direction. You know, there is no direction as to whether or not you're you're driving your car north, whether you're driving your car you know, 45 degrees. You're just knowing that you're driving at a particular speed. Same goes with distance. A person can be six feet tall. A person can travel 20 meters but you're not really implying a direction. Things with mass, you know, kilograms, uh, mass, we don't actually consider a direction. And the same goes with volume. We, if we have two, 20 liters of a liquid inside of a container, that doesn't imply a volume. Whereas with vector, there is a magnitude and a direction. So vectors, we're talking about velocity, you know, implying that there is not only a speed, but you have a direction that you're moving in. Displacement. You're actually talking about your distance from an origin, your distance from a reference point. Same with force, you know, that implies a direction as well as with momentum. So scalar is only looking at magnitude, vector is direction. And by direction, we could be talking about a, an angle, we could talk about an orientation or a relative position from something else. So let's look at an example here. So let's say you have a person here that's going to travel around an object and this object is 50 feet by 50 feet so a square object and I want you to note that we all actually do have an orientation or a coordinate system here so this direction going up is north and going to the right is east and both of those are being signified as positive directions so that person travels and they make a complete path around the object. So what was their distance? And what was their displacement? Well, their distance is fairly simple. The total distance they traveled was the 25 feet plus the 50 feet plus the second 50 feet when they went on this corner, 50 feet again, and then the last 25 feet. We add all those up, and we end up with a 200-foot distance travel. But what was their displacement? Well, if we look at their displacement, we have to take into account direction as well as the magnitude. So this person went, their first path was 25 feet in the negative direction. So they traveled 25 feet in the negative. Then they traveled 50 feet in the negative, again, relative to our coordinate system. Relative to this coordinate system, they're traveling 50 feet in the negative direction. So then 50 feet, this time they're going positive relative to our coordinate system. 50 feet positive again, and then 25 feet negative. So their total displacement was 0 feet and 0 degrees. So they didn't really travel uh, as far as displacement anywhere. So their total displacement is 0. 
So let's look at a second example. Same scenario, same person going around a 50 by 50 foot object. So they travel and they just travel to the corner. So what was their total displacement as well as their total distance travel? Well, we can see the total distance. Again, they went 25 feet and 50 feet, so 75 feet total. But their displacement is a little bit different. Their displacement relative to their origin is just this green line here, a total you know, path you know, straight to it as the crow flies. So we measure that a little bit different. So again, the distance was just 25 feet plus 50 feet or a total of 75 feet. That is how far they travel. That's the total distance of what they travel. But when we take into account displacement, we have to measure it a bit differently. And in vector addition, it's something known as head to tail. So the vector, the tail of one vector to the head of the other. We also have to take into account this direction, as we saw in our last example. And we use a method called the root sum square, or root mean square. Excuse me. So it's 25 squared. Uh, feet squared plus 50 feet squared and this would work whether it was negative or positive and we take the square root of that and we end up with 55.9 feet so this distance is 55.9 feet 55.9 feet so that total distance traveled but displacement also has a direction tied to it so we have, let's look at this as an angle. So we've got an angle here of theta. So what was the direction that they traveled? Well, we can measure that using the arc tangent of 50 over 25. This is based off of Pythagorean theorem since we're looking at a right triangle. So 50 over 25 of the arc tangent is 63.4 degrees. So this person traveled 55.9 feet at 63.4 feet from the horizontal. And that's how they wound up at the corner. That is the, the actual displacement. This is also known as a resultant. You'll oftentimes hear that term in physics and in engineering as a resultant distance. Or sometimes people will just say, what's the magnitude of the distance travel? Meaning, you know, what was the vector distance? So let's go back to our question. The hunter and the gun. So if we consider this hunter and this gun, and we think of what's going to happen with this with this monkey. You know, the hunter is actually shooting his gun at this bullet. And when we think of the bullet's path, we actually are considering a resultant, you know, the actual distance traveled from the tip of the gun to its actual object, you know, the, the, our actual displacement. But that breaks up into two vectors, much like when we consider the person walking around the building. And we got to consider that it's a velocity that goes in the horizontal as well as a velocity that goes in the vertical, that's totally due to gravity. So as the monkey is dependent on gravity as it falls, the bullet is also dependent upon gravity as it falls. And since they're falling at the same rate from the same height, the hunter can actually get away with pointing his gun directly at the monkey. And if they happen at the same instance, this should be his resultant as far as his displacement. So keeping the uh, bullet or the gun trained onto the monkey will result in actually hitting the monkey, you know, just as, as it starts to land, or as it, you know, at some distance during the fall, without having to make any adjustments. So the bullet and the monkey fall at the same rate, and we treat the velocity as independent in the vertical and the horizontal. So this is Professor Cummings, again. You know, thanks for watching. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, like it. If it was helpful, please share this video. Again, I post videos every week, and you can follow me on Facebook under Infinity MFG. You can follow me on Twitter, Infinity MFG, as well as on Google Plus page, where I have the engineer's reference. And I have update on engineering news as well as manufacturing news. Again, thanks for watching, and talk to you soon.